as you can see by the title, this is a care for the Kenyan sand boa. Um, as you know, with some of the last care ones, I miss out a lot of things, so I'm going to go through this list. So, um, let's kick it off. Right, you've got your temperament. Right, a Kenyan sand boa. Um, this will be killing birds, two birds with one stone actually. This will discuss um, their lifestyle as well. Um, I don't know if you can see. As you can see, she's just got a tip of her head out of the substrate. Uh, if I can zoom. And there it is. Um, I'll get on to why she's doing that in a minute. Uh, temperament for these guys. Um, well, I've had no problems so far. Um, I have her out. Uh, obviously not often because she's fed and she's new. So, um, I have her out. She's fine. Bit on the skittish side. Uh, don't know what's going on and stuff. But uh, when it comes to putting her back, she will literally try and escape the enclosure just so she can stay out. Well, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Um, now... The lifestyle of these, uh, as you can see, they are borrowers. So if you want a snake that you will see moving about the enclosure and very, very active, do not get one of these, as you will not see that with these unless they're disturbed, um, by, i.e. like by you picking your hand up. Um, I will do a little quick handling at the end of this video, as that's last on my list. But, excuse my scruffy writing. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want one of these, be prepared to, as you can see, literally have an enclosure of sand. Um, as you can see, you will see them now and then, like I can, inside there with their head. What they're doing, they're keeping their head up on the surface to monitor what's going on, um, waiting for food. Um, because if they're constantly underground, um, they won't know if there's anything dangerous above them. Um, but they keep their head on the surface to look out for danger. If they see danger, they will scarper off underground. But, um, they're basically just monitoring what's around them, um, i.e. their surroundings, whether there's any predators around, because they're not, you don't, they don't know they're in captivity, they don't know there's any danger around them or not so um let's get on to husbandry now husbandry with these guys you keep it bone dry uh reason being is they're from kenya where it is dry anyway um you do not need to spray uh you need well ventilated enclosure um just to so any humidity can escape I haven't got a hygrometer in there at the moment, um, but I don't think I need it, as you can see all the ventilation. I mean, even in these, you've got ventilation here. Um, now, the only thing with humidity, I don't know if I've already said it, but this is my next topic, water. Uh, some people, this is a bit big for this enclosure, but as I said, it's well ventilated. If it weren't ventilated, it'd be a bottle cap or like... Um, a um, takeout sauce pot, like a deli cup or whatever, small, small deli cup, um, if that's what you call them. But yeah, um, but as it's well ventilated, I've gave her the option if she wants to go for a soak, which I highly doubt she would. Um, she can. I mean, if it does get too hot in there, um, as you can see, I've got no heat mat here and no heat mat here. It's in the middle. Purely because there's lips there and I can't get the heat mat onto the bottom of the enclosure. But yeah, if she, if she wants a soak, she can. If she wants a drink, it's there. Because um, obviously they ain't got voices. They can't tell you when they want a drink. They will just dehydrate and you don't want that. But like I said, if I had that, um, if I didn't have enough ventilation, the dish would be smaller. So what's next? Right, your heating. This is... A debatable one, as with all snakes, I never keep large snakes on a heat mat unless they're in a um, breeding rack. Um, I've never bred snakes before, but that's what I'm going to call them anyway, or racking system. Um, I know a lot of people use them in the States, but for my small snakes, I use 
a heat map. I'm trying a new method here, as you can see on FE, her heat probe goes in and underground. Uh, it's the same with this, but I have the actual probe for the thermostat. I will get onto heating in a minute. I have the probe running up and goes straight directly under the heat mat. And with that, I have got perfect temps in the enclosure. You're going to want a thermometer. Um, as you can see, there's mine. goes in under and it's directly on the heat mat so you can get a precise reading. There you go, it's 32.6, which is perfect. You can take it up to, I don't know, 30, th no, sorry, 33, around about. Any higher is too hot for them. You will probably cook your snake. Um, but as long as they've got a cold area, which mine has, either side, uh, a water dish, they're fine. But I would not recommend going over 33. Um, so what else is a Substrate, okay. Right, as you can see, I'm using sand. I'm using a sand called Desert Sand, which was recommended by the pet shop. Um, uh, this is what she was kept in in the shop. Uh, I was going to use Aspen, which you can. The only problem with this, it doesn't hold burrows, but there you go. It's more like natural. Um, Aspen is this, as you can see, Effie and a hide. Um, so if you want to use that you can use that uh, that'll be fine it holds burrows better than this stuff um, so yeah that's down to personal choice um, I, did, I did have a choice of colours from the pet shop I had a red or this natural colour I was going to go with the red but she said the lady in the pet shop lovely lady um, she says that Sometimes it can, I mean, because she's a snow, she's like white with yellowy patterns. Um, it can dye their scales. So I thought, okay, I'll go for the natural because I don't want that to happen. I want her to have a natural colour. Well, natural morph colour. So, okay, that's that done. Um, yeah, where was the substrate? Water supply, I've already sold you, I'll tell you again. Uh, well ventilated. A dish about that size would do. Obviously, bigger if you've got an adult female. Uh, this is a baby, as you will see. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get onto the handling now. Um, I'm not going to handle her for too long, as she did eat yesterday. If you haven't seen my video, please go check it out. Um, it's been over 24 hours. I, I leave it for 48. Well, I leave it for under 48, but when a new day starts, I class that as one day. As long as she's not been fed at like 11.59pm and then it's midnight, that, that won't count. But what I'm going to do, I'll get her out just to show you what she looks like, uh, if you haven't seen any of my videos. Um, and then I will put her back. So if you bear with, I've just got to have a dig about and see if I can find her. Well, I know where she is. She's under there, hidden. So I'll go get her out and I'll be back with you. Alright guys, there she is. Uh, she don't like her tail being touched. Um, oh gosh, she's <laughs> making a run for it. Um, she's a bit skittish. But she calms down once she knows. Um, I'll have her out for a bit. I will even show you this. She likes human contact. Um, you can't really see her at the moment as she's been a bit jumpy but if we just let her go where she wants to go she shall be fine as you can see she's calmed down um, so this is a colours I'll just zoom in I'll put the phone on my lap and zoom in just so you can get a nice close up of her scales there's her colouring as you can see she's like a yellow and white um, oh yeah sorry guys I forgot to mention they have eyes on Closer to the top of their heads, higher up than most snakes. Um, this is because as they are burrowers, as I discussed with you, they keep their head poked out of the sand so they need to see. And if their eyes are too low, they won't be able to see anything. So this is why their heads hide. They've got little dot eyes. Um, if I just gently... There we go. Yeah, as, as you can see, she's very young, so... But I'll, I'll show you what she's like when I put her back. As you can see, she's very, very calm. And then when you put her back, 
Oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. As you can see, she wants to stay on me. She's like, no. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you do get a Sambo and it does want to go back, and it's not like this, don't worry. It's just that snake individually. As you can see, she likes being handled. She's calmed down as soon as I go to put her back in. Okay, there we go. She wanted to go in that time. But as you can see, she'll start climbing. Uh, most every Sambo video I've seen, you put them in their enclosure and they just. Oh, she's gonna go and have a drink. Nope. Uh, every Sambo I've seen, they you put them back in their enclosure and they will just burrow. This one, as I said, she likes being out. Um, she will pace around the enclosure for a bit. I'm guessing she's looking for my warmth and human contact. But they are right little characters, uh, as you can see. She's. Yeah, I look, watch, see how she's moving, and then I take her out, and she just sits there. So yeah, she likes being handled. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to put her back in her enclosure. There you go. She knows I'm there, so she's calm. Bear in mind, I've only had her a day, I shouldn't really be handling, but, I mean, does she look stressed to you? Because I don't think she does. So I'm going to put her back in her enclosure. And then I will talk a bit more about them and hopefully teach you a bit, so bear with. So, alright guys, as you can see, um, I forgot to mention one of her weaknesses that she does not like is her tail being touched. She goes a bit erratic when you do that. But as you can see, she's not burrowing straight down. She's staying out on the surface. She'll stay up for about half an hour and then go straight down. Every other one I've seen, they will just go straight under the substrate. Like this girl climbs up, tries to get out and stuff. Um, but as you can see, there's no reason for her to be doing that. It's not too hot. I guess she just likes human contact. So, um, um, between hog noses and these, I haven't experienced a nippy one. As I said, this is my first one. Uh, I only got it yesterday. I'm going by what research I've done and how I read her behaviour. I do have four snakes now. I've had a number I've been keeping on and off since 2010 so but I got nabbed by her if you want to see the bite report please go through my channel and find it she's in the process of being tamed as she is still hatchling shy <laughs> as I call it but uh, yeah look there we go so right guys again highly recommend these brilliant starter snake if you want something that you're gonna see moving about the enclosure get a corn snake um, these are literally just tubs of sand. Uh, you'll just see the head poking out the sand. You won't see much more as they are, as their name, sand boa. They live under the sand. Uh, again, can use aspen. So, um, yeah, I recommend these. But if you want something that's more active, um, more, oh, I don't know the word, but if you want something that's more active, say... A corn snake, but they are a very basic beginner snake. Um, but yeah, don't know if I've already said it, but they can be kept the same. Minus the sand, obviously the sand for that one. Aspen for that one. So um, yeah guys, well, I thought I'd do this little video of what I know. It may be updated, it may not. I might have got everything right. But if I missed anything, please just drop a comment and um, I'll reply to you and correct it. So, cheers everyone. If you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do. It would mean a lot and it would help me out. So, um, yeah. So, cheers everyone.